the great high priest. Yes, Lord. We pledge you high above all else, above all else, as we come to you and pray.
Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh God. I feel an awesome praise of the Holy Ghost even now. Come on, somebody. Mabo shin the robobo sanda. Yellow robobo sete rababa sin the robobo sata. Holy Ghost. Mako de baby sin the robobo sanda rababo sete. Ekon yellow was sata. Ekon ye baby sin or ye babo sete. Oh God, we lift up your name. Come on, somebody, let me worship. The Lord is here. Jesus, my God, Holy Ghost, you, Shanda. You're welcome, Holy Spirit. Come, welcome the praise of the Lord in the house, even now. Yes, Lord. Jesus. God, glory, spirit of worship. Jesus, there's a spirit of worship. Jesus, ah, holy God. Yes, Holy Spirit. Jesus. Ah, oh, yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, feel the Holy Spirit. Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. We lift our cups to heaven this morning. Fill us up, Lord. Lord, as we come in your house of worship, in your house of bread this morning, my soul does magnify the Lord and my spirit praise his name. The heaven declare the glory of God and the ferment show it is and it works. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord and great is to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountains of his holiness. Lord, you are holy God and we acknowledge your presence this morning. Thank you one more time that when we went to bed last night, it wasn't a guarantee that we would wake up to see a day that we'll never see again. But this morning, I pray that your anointing will run from our head down to the soles of our feet this morning. I pray for every aspect of this morning's service that, Lord God, you will move in a very special way. Give us an upper room experience this morning, Jesus. That it will be nice abroad, Jesus. Life will be impacted and life will be changed. Oh God, many signs and wonders were done through the apostles. Oh God, 
while you were in the bottom of the ship you were sleeping the winds and the waves were bashing against the boat and they came and they said Lord carry us though that we perish but when Lord God you came and you stretch your hands and you speak to the winds and the waves and say peace be still they were so amazed that they say what manner of man is this that the winds and the waves obey him in our country there are so many winds and waves Lord Jesus they are blowing contrary Lord Jesus but this morning of the church of the living God the one that was built upon blood and great sacrifice we pray that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of the living God despite we're not in our full number this morning Lord Jesus Christ wherever we are we can lift our hands this morning and we can touch Jesus just like Paul and Silas did while they were beaten and thrown in prison we are singing praises unto you despite our circumstances we are singing praises unto you despite our circumstances despite the many troubles we have we are still lifting our hands to heaven because Lord God we know one of these days even if our eyes are closed in debt we're going to see you the one who died for us so the song says so we bow as we enter the throne room as we cast our cares down at your feet and we cry holy thou art holy there is none like thee in your presence that's where we want to be Lord I pray for those right now for our brethren who are sick and afflicted and our visitors those who are joining us on zoom and YouTube this morning live stream I pray that Lord God you will touch such an individual this morning by the power of Jesus Lord we are speaking the word right now that somebody receive healing in the name of Jesus there may be a brethren that is feeling discouraged and feeling to join the toil, but I want to say hold on just a little while longer weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning Lord we are facing with different kind of perplexities Lord this morning but we know one of these days our change is going to come this mortal shall put on immortality death is going to be swallowed up in victory no more dove cut, no more murderers. Oh God. So we have a hope in you that make us not ashamed as the church of the living God. We have been baptized in your name and filled with the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. Breathe upon somebody who have not received the Holy Ghost, who have not taken on the name of Jesus. The bride, the moderator, the singers, the technical team. The one is going to break the bread. The one is going to bring the word. Speak to our hearts. Help us be to be charged by the power of the Holy Ghost. To worship you like we have never worshipped you before. Lord, take control this morning. Give us the victory right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, say in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Deacon Thompson, praise the Lord. And we are in service this morning. Bless the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Can you just give the Lord a big hallelujah shout? From the bottom of our hearts this morning. Can you give the Lord a big hallelujah shout? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord that he brought us here this morning. We are alive and we are well this morning. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And as our team said, rebuilding the walls of holiness. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we'll be singing from our Pentecostal hymn this morning, hymn 41, an old account. 
was settled. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
a bad debt. Praise the Lord. So the Lord have written off our debt today. Praise the Lord. And our records are clear today. For you wash our sins away. Hallelujah. The whole account was settled long ago. Praise the Lord. When, we're, when you were in sin, praise the Lord Jesus. We were, our sins were growing. It was just banking up, banking up, banking up. Hallelujah. But when we met this man, Christ Jesus, he settled it. Hallelujah. He washed our sins away. Hallelujah. And it was settled. Praise the Lord Jesus. And we thank the Lord for settling our debts today. Praise the Lord. A debt where we could not, never, never, never pay. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And at this time, Sister Manning will be reading the scripture for us this morning. And will be taken from 1 Peter 1, verses 13 to 25. Praise the Lord Jesus. Gird up the lines of your mind to the end. For the grace is of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former time, former loss in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the Lord, but as Sorry, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope be in God. Seeing ye have glorified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, being born, that born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, but the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof fadeth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Samani. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. One of these days you're going to look for me. One of these days you're going to look for me. One of these days gonna look for me I'll be gone in the twinkling of an eye one of these days you're gonna look for me one of these days you're gonna look for me one of these days you're gonna look for me Move on up a little higher. 
me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And at this time, I'm inviting Sister Doreen Williams, our leader of the missions department. Praise the Lord. She will be welcome us this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It is because of his grace and his mercies while we are here, we are alive, and we have a lot to give God thanks for. I just want to welcome everyone this morning to our mission service. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those whom we haven't seen in a little while want to welcome you. And we also want to welcome all of you who are in service in the science for those who are joining via um those who are joining live, praise God, via Zoom this morning, and those who will be watching hereafter. The Lord richly bless you, continue to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. I just want to welcome Minister Manning, Minister Dixon, Minister Dennis this morning. Praise the Lord Jesus and all the saints here this morning. Welcome in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And at this time, I'm inviting Minister Manning just to do the announcements. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let me just add my welcome. Praise God to all those that have been extended before. Praise the name of Jesus. It is indeed a pleasure to be in the presence of God this morning. Praise God. And to worship and honor his holy name. Amen. Praise God. As we look to the upcoming events, praise God. I want to let you know that this afternoon, praise the name of Jesus, of course, we will be having our usual afternoon Sunday school via Zoom between 1.30 and 5. And the times 1.30 to for the nursery, 2 to 3 for preteens, three to four for teens, and four to five for young adults. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise God. Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., we have our weekly WhatsApp prayer meeting. Praise the name of Jesus. And then on Wednesday between 9 a.m. and 12 noon, we have our weekly fasting service also via WhatsApp, fasting and prayer. Praise the name of Jesus. And in the evening at 7 p.m., we commence, uh, we, we have our Bible study as we continue on the topic, rebuilding the walls of holiness. Amen. Next week, Sunday at 6 a.m., we have right to divide the word on fame, 95 FM. At 7.30, praise God, a.m., we have our live stream service via YouTube. At 9.30, we have prayer meeting in the sanctuary. And followed by 10 a.m., by our worship service and of course because of the current disaster risk management orders until the end of October only authorized persons are allowed to attend but the service will also be on Zoom. Amen. Praise God. We will keep you posted if there are any changes in the risk management orders that will um, affect our service times. Amen. And of course at 1.35 p.m. we have Sunday school. Praise God as we continue to prepare for the commencement of our building project at 11 King Street. We ask persons to make donations. Praise God. And you should identify those donations separately from a regular tithe and offering. You may put them in an envelope labeled King Street Project. And if you're making checks, you make them out of Pentecostal Lighthouse. And those who are doing online transfer. Praise God should also identify this as being for the King Street project. Amen. At all times, you may contact us via our email at pentlightupc at gmail.com. You may send us, call us by phone or send us a message via WhatsApp at 1-876-781-9606. And we invite you, wherever you are, to be part of our services. Or if you want to speak to a minister, you want to make arrangements. For our home Bible study, and home Bible study these days doesn't mean we come to your house. Home Bible study means we make special arrangements to connect with you. We go through the Word of God. You are, we can also be contacted if you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus. If you have babies to be dedicated, if in these trying and troubling times you need counseling, and those who are um, preparing to enter the holy estate of marriage, 
or are preparing to put to rest the remains of a loved one in a funeral, you may also contact us. We thank you very much for joining us to be a part of our service this morning. And we pray, our oh Lord Jesus Christ will richly bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Minister Manning. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. And we are going to go into a time of testimony this morning. Praise the Lord Jesus. Some sweet day, I'm going away. I'm going to leave this world no more to roam. Some sweet day, when life is over. Some sweet day, I'm going away. and share our testimony with us this morning. Praise the Lord. Goodbye world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. First, let me give honor to God. Then to you all. Praise God. At first, let me give honor to God. And then to you all those who want to greet you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. This morning, I'm just going to share a testimony with you. About, it was about a month ago. My niece, she's a um, renal patient, right? She has her kidneys. Both of them failed. And she always do dialysis on twice per, per week. And um, on one Monday she went and she did her dialysis. And um, when she was there, um, she wasn't feeling well and they called. And my sister went down there to get her. And um, they had also stopped the dialysis. They also did a COVID test on her urgently. And um, she came home. And she reached home. Normally, when she come home, she would um, lay, she would eat. Well, she would buy something, and she would come in, and she would eat, and then she would um, lay down and have a rest. But on this this particular Monday, when she came home, she she didn't eat, and she lay down. But normally, she would get up by five o'clock or so and get herself refreshed up and everything. But this Monday, she wasn't getting up. She didn't get up and. Um, I went around to my sister because she's around my house. And I went to my sister and I said to her, I don't like how my niece is looking. Okay, she come around and she look at her. And uh, she um, went and she um, looked about a little soup for her to have. When she finished and she came to give it to her, she couldn't eat it. She said, Mommy, you have to feed me. No, she didn't say, Mom, she said, you have to feed me. 
when she took her up to give her, she couldn't sit up. She couldn't sit up. She was falling back. So we took the pillow and we um, kind of eased her up, let her rest. But then she went and she got back to sleep. And she was there in the bed. She was restless. She was just not herself. She wasn't being herself. And uh, it was coming down to the, to the um, evening now, the night hours. And my sister called the, the nurse down by the dialysis center. And she was talking to her and telling her the, the situation. And the nurse was saying that she don't really want her to take her to the hospital because of the, the COVID crisis. So we were there watching her and watching her, but things wasn't taking any turn. So we make a call and we get a vehicle for her to go to the doctor. When she reached there, um, my sister called us and she said it was about 20 doctors around her. And they were saying that her diagnosis doesn't look well. And uh, the pressure would not stabilize. The heart rate was going up, going down. It was just fluctuating, both the pressure and the heart rate. And the doctor was saying that um, she may not make it. She had 50-50 chance. However, I called Sister Mal Malcolm. And I said to her that my niece is not feeling well, and she prayed. I text Brother Mannings, and I text Sister Simone also. And they prayed. And at home, everybody was there breaking down. And I go around and I call them together and I said, we are going to pray. And we join and together. And I said, I don't want no crying. No crying. We are going to pray. And we are going to live our faith. God. It's not what the doctor says. It's what God says. And uh, we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And it went on throughout the night. She still wasn't improving. And then when it was about dawn, about 4.35, my sister called and they said, um, they get the pressure a little bit up. She had on four um, of the blood pressure machine. And she had on about, about three of the art machine on her. She was throwing up all over. And um, it continued until till then. My sister came back and just said, um, she's stabilized now. I said, thank you, Jesus. This is not what the enemy want. This is what the enemy want, but God want something different. You know, and this today she's okay. Give God thanks and praise for her. She's all right this morning. I just want to give God thanks because it's not what the enemy says. It's what God says. And God still deliver. You pray for me in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He's a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working. Praise the Lord Jesus. At this time, I've been inviting Sister Cassandra, Cassandra Conwell to testify in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, everyone. Indeed, God is a miracle working God. He's just so awesome. I could remember when I was, you know, um, I think it was last year, last year, and it's like I had about three shoes. I had a I had, a, I had a, a crepe, I had a shoe that I wear to work, and church, that same shoe that I would wear to work, and I would wear it to church. And I had a, a slippers that I could remember, it was a pink slippers. And what I would do, I would just wear it, like, you know, go on the road, wherever I'm going, and things like that. And the slippers would just print out on my foot. And it's like, I was saying to the Lord, Lord, please, I had a shoes bag I got from my mom. And it's like the shoes bag, you know, it has plenty of space. And it's like I was saying, in the name of Jesus, the shoes bag is going to be filled with shoes. <laughs> and before the year end, and I spoke to it. And it's like, 
I was wearing the slippers, wearing the slippers and all of that. But after, like, when the pandemic came in and when I started to sell the mask and so forth, I said that I'm going to invest in one, one slippers, I believe, at first. And then that I was getting slippers, getting shoes and all of that. So I just want to give God thanks. Not to say that it's like temporarily, like temporal blessings. This morning I woke up in the shoes bag and I said to the Lord, Lord, I, just, I don't want only temporal blessings from you. I want spiritual blessings as well. Because yeah, you're getting the blessings on, on this earth and like you're saying, yes, God, yes, I'm being blessed. But the real thing is spiritual blessing because we need eternal life. Amen. So I just want to thank the Lord for everything he has done for me. Oh, I love Jesus. He is my Savior. When storms are raging, be my shelter. God is a good God and he's worthy to be praised. You know that when Brother Spence was in the hospital, praise the Lord, I WhatsApp him. I called him, praise the Lord Jesus, no respond. Praise the Lord. I even said to Brother Fuskins, I mean, I've been WhatsApping Brother Spence and I can't get him. Praise the Lord. And Brother Fuskins said, you know, so I WhatsApp him and he sent this to me. Praise the Lord. But, you know, one day, I was come, one day I was coming up and I said, Lord, I was talking to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I remember someone said there's two types of healing. Praise the Lord. Either you heal Brother Spence out, heal him to come out of a testimony, or you're going to heal him out of the world. Praise the Lord. That's what I was saying, you know, talking to myself. That's God while I was coming home from work. You know, but God has... Heal him out of this world. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And we will miss him very, very much. Praise the Lord. Because I remember going to the markets on Saturdays. I could say, Brother Spence, I go to the market first. And I said, Brother Spence, I'm leaving my bag here. And I'm going to the supermarket and come back. I could always leave my bag. So yesterday when I got to Spanish on last week, I wasn't the week before. Is there is no zeal to go to Spanish Town. Yesterday when I went, when I was passed around where he, he used to sell the eggs, I said, boy, I can never leave my bag after logo logo with the bugs. <laughs> Same way with the bugs. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we'll miss him, a dear brother to us. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. And I know that he's gone to a better place. Praise the Lord. The Lord has... Heal him out of this world. Praise the Lord. At this time, I'm inviting the praise team to come and minister in song at this time. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Let us worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Please Lord, you're indeed. worthy to be praised. Indeed, a good Hallelujah. and wonderful God. From the raising of the sun and Thank the you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for one more day in your presence, mighty God.
Minister Manning, Minister Dennis, Minister Dixon, to our mission director, Sister Williams, and to all departmental leaders and saints of Jesus Christ, I greet you in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. And to my wife and daughter that is at home viewing, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Without you, Lord Jesus. I would not be in here. You are ready. Turn with me to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 17 and verse 18. And also Michael 7, verse 11. Bless the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And it read thus. Then said I unto them, 
he see the distress that we are in. O Jerusalem, live, live it like, as a light waste, and the gate thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more reproach. Then I said, as a word, then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, and also the king's word that he has spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Micah 7 verse 11. In the days that thy wall are to build, in that day shall the decree be removed. Lord Jesus, as I stand here, Lord Jesus, not of my will, but of yours, Lord. And Lord Jesus, I pray, O oh God, that you will speak, O oh God, through me unto your people, O oh God. And when you are finished, each and every one of us, O oh God, will be edified by your words, Lord Jesus. And our life, Almighty God, will also be transformed, Almighty God. And Lord Jesus, your good work will be manifested in us. In your mighty name, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord Jesus. You may be seated. And we see in chapter 2 of Jeremiah, verse 18, that the Lord strengthened his people's hands. Bless the Lord Jesus. And in Micah, the decree has removed. Praise the Lord Jesus. And over my topic this morning is rebuilding our spiritual wall. Praise the Lord Jesus. How do we rebuild our spiritual wall? We first have to build and repair our halter in our heart. Bless the Lord Jesus. If our heart is not clean, then our wall will be filthy. Bless the Lord Jesus. So how we rebuild our spiritual wall, we have to first rebuild the altar of our heart. Bless the Lord Jesus. And if we have any form of iniquity in our heart, yes. beloved, we are in trouble with the Lord Jesus. Because where is iniquity, the Lord will not dwell. Bless the Lord Jesus. Yes. So we have to do like David and said, Lord, create a clean heart within me and a right spirit in each and every one of us. So if our spirit is renewed, bless the Lord Jesus, then we have a chance or we shall inherit eternity. With the Lord Jesus. Because God created man to live for eternity. Bless the Lord Jesus. So, David said, renew my heart, Lord Jesus. But the Lord will only renew our heart if we confess our sin unto him. Bless the Lord Jesus. So, in Psalms 127, he said, except the Lord build the house. We labor in vain. So except the Lord rebuild our heart, because we can't do that on our own. There's no formula we can come up with to build our heart except the formula of Jesus Christ, which is the blood of Jesus. Bless the Lord Jesus. So when Nehemiah went to Jerusalem, the Bible said that Nehemiah, he gathered a few men and they inspect. Bless the Lord Jesus, the wall. So when we are going to rebuild our heart, the altar in our heart, we have to gather a few men. We have to gather our elders, our deacon, our minister, and we assess the wall. Bless the Lord Jesus. Because it's only when we truly do assessment, we can repair what is damaged. Bless the Lord Jesus. So the question is, oh, is my fasting wall, oh, is my prayer wall, oh, is my wall of holiness? I have to do assessment. And how can we know when our heart is not intact with Jesus? 
by being in a relationship with Jesus. And the Holy Spirit then will prick us when we are not in tune with what God wants us to be. Bless the Lord Jesus. So once the assessment is completed, then the rebuild process started. Bless the Lord Jesus. So then we can ask Jesus to restore the joy of our salvation. The zeal that we have when we just receive the baptism in Jesus' name. The zeal that we have when we just receive the Holy Spirit. A lot of us, joy has gone. A lot of us, zeal has gone. I can speak of myself. I have lost the zeal. The burden that I used to have is no more. So I have to do an assessment. I said, Lord, take me back to 2017 April when you give me that burden, that zeal. And I was driving to work and the Lord began to speak. Bless the Lord Jesus. And I started to minister to myself while I was driving to work. And the Lord said, I'm going to teach you how to rebuild the wall of your spiritual life. Bless the Lord Jesus. He said, go to the book of the New Testament. Bless the Lord Jesus. But don't start at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But start of the epistle of Paul. And if you knew me, you know that the apostle Paul is my favorite come on, come on. apostle. Bless the Lord Jesus. And I began to read the epistle of the apostle Paul. And my life began to transform before my eyes. And the world began to rebuild. And then I remember that my minister was saying that he would do the whole day at work, not fasting, but no hunger. But the minute he tried to fast, that's when the hunger take control. So I said, Lord, I need to start rebuild my fasting wall because it has been a while since I fast. And really go down and need city and pray and communicate with you, Lord. And I started to rebuild my fasting wall. So I started to fast. And when the hunger, when the hunger come, I remember what Minister Manning said. And I rebuke it and I carry on. And I go and I go and I fast. And while I'm fasting, I read the book of Romans. And by a, and by a few minutes, I'm finished with the book of Romans. I move to first and second. Yes, Corinthians, and I just continue, continue. No, I am at the book of Hebrews. And that happened within a week. I complete so much epistle that was written by the Apostle Paul. Because I decided with the help of God that my spiritual wall have to rebuild. Bless the Lord Jesus. Because that's the only way I can inherit eternity in heaven with the Lord Jesus. So we see why... The, the prophet Elijah rebuilt the altar that the prophet of Baal they use. He uses the same material that was used by the false prophet. But what the prophet did, he washed it. Bless the Lord Jesus. So when we baptize in Jesus' name, Submerged beneath the water, we are washed in Jesus. So the, the prophet, he washed the altar in Jesus. Bless the Lord Jesus. So all iniquity, all corruption was washed off. Bless the Lord Jesus. Then he dig a trench. And he separated. The trench acted as a separation between him and the false prophet. Bless the Lord Jesus. And then he place water in the church to separate his altar from the altar of Baal. Bless the Lord Jesus. So we have to separate our altar from the altar of the flesh and, and the altar of this world. Bless the Lord Jesus. So we have to dig a trench in our heart and place it with the water that belongs to Jesus. Because he said unto the woman at the well, drink of this water and you will thirst no more. Bless the Lord Jesus. So I said, Lord, I need that water once more because I become thirsty. 
I said, Lord, I become thirsty. I need back a refresh water. Bless the Lord Jesus. And the Lord gave me back his water. I'm not thirst no more of the things of the world, but I'm thirst for the things that belongs to Jesus. Bless the Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So because the halter was filthy, the prophet did have to cleanse it. So the Bible said that Elijah poor put the wood in order. And we know that our God worked in harder. Bless the Lord Jesus. So he placed it in harder. He didn't just pile them up any and any way. So when we are rebuilding our heart, we just can't rebuild it any and any way. We have to build it in harder. Bless the Lord Jesus. So by rebuilding the, our heart, we have to rebuild it so that the fire from heaven can come and consume our sacrifices. Bless the Lord Jesus. So the prophet, he did not build a new altar. So he did not go there and gather new material to build the altar. He used what was available. So we have to use what is available to rebuild the altar of our heart. And that is the Bible. That is the word of God. We have to use the word of God to rebuild the altar in our heart. Bless the Lord Jesus. So he repaired. The halter that was broken. Bless the Lord Jesus. And he had to take it all away that being active. And he had to be in use in the past to worship the God of Baal. So he cleansed the halter that was broken from what they were Praying upon, because they were praying upon to a false God, a God that was created by hand. Bless the Lord Jesus. So we see that in the book of First King, chapter 18, that Elijah demonstrated that we only can be cleansed from our sin through the shedding of Jesus' blood. Bless the Lord Jesus. So we see where Jesus went to Calvary and shed his blood so that we can have a chance of eternity with him in heaven. Yes, and we sang the song many times, what can wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whiter than snow? Nothing blood but the blood of Jesus. Jesus' blood is pure. Bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So, So Jesus said unto his disciple in John 15, verse 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So we were baptized in the name of Jesus. So we were baptized in the word of Jesus. We were baptized in the only name that was given in heaven and earth that any man can be saved. The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bless the Lord Jesus. So the water goes over us and now we are cleansed. So when we submerge, not sprinkling of water on our head, but submerge, we are cleansed from our past life. And we see where the Apostle Paul said that once we are baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, we are a new, we are now a new creature. In the Lord Jesus. All old things are past. And we sang. That he had paid. For our. Almighty God. Bless the Lord Jesus. He have settled it long ago. When he went to Calvary. Bless the Lord Jesus. So it's very important for. So it was. So we see where it was important. Of the water of Elijah. To cleanse the altar. Of Baal. Because without the cleanliness of that altar, then God would not pour out his fire upon a filthy altar. 
Bless the Lord Jesus. So if, our, so if iniquity is in our heart, God will not dwell in our heart. So we have to cleanse our heart from all iniquity. Bless the Lord Jesus. The, so the Lord said, when the rich man asked, oh, can I inherit eternity? He said, love thy God. And love thy neighbor. Those two commandments sum up all commandments. So if we love the Lord Jesus and we love our neighbor, we fulfill the commandments of the Lord Jesus. So if there is iniquity in our heart, we cannot love with iniquity in our heart. Because the Bible says, if you said you love me, God, and hate your brother, you are a liar. So we can't love the Lord Jesus and don't love our brother. And we can't love the Lord Jesus with iniquity in our heart. So we have to first rebuild the altar of our heart if you want to inherit eternity or to be or, or, or before we can rebuild our altar of holiness. Yeah. Bless the Lord Jesus. So when we rebuild the altar in our heart, then the Lord Jesus will send down his fire from heaven to consume our sacrifice. So beloved, we need to rebuild the altar of holiness. And we need to rebuild the altar of prayer. We need to rebuild the altar of fasting. I last a classmate supposed to be this year from the same virus and when they, they send in the school group that I must, we must pray for him. Minister Manning, when I began to pray, the Holy Spirit said, no, he's going home. And I continue to pray, pray, pray. But so I'm praying, he saw the Spirit, he said, it makes no sense, pray. Because he's going home. And I kept it to myself. And I will pray every day, but so I'm praying. Is so this will said, don't pray. And he died. And I said, Well, Lord, you were telling me that I should not pray. But I did not share it with the schoolmate because I don't want anyone to say that, you know, I'm, I want him to die or something. Which, that was not in my intention. My intention is to see him come out and to graduate with us in the near future. But the Lord bring him home. But he was just over here, was baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Spirit. And started to go to Bible school. Because he was from the Adventists. His family still served there. But he did the trans transformation or transition from there unto the apostolic faith. Bless the Lord Jesus. So we see when we build the wall in our heart. We, the wall will give us a protection and security. So when our wall is up and running, then the adversary cannot come in. Bless the Lord Jesus, because we are protected by the wall that we build in our heart. And that is the wall that Jesus directed us to, to build in our heart. Bless the Lord Jesus. So we have to rebuild, as I said, our wall of prayer, fasting, righteousness, holiness, so that our gateway to eternity can be secure. Yeah. So if we don't have holiness and righteousness, and we're not living a holy life, one that is pleasing unto God, then we will not secure eternity with God. So we have to guard our walls and protect ourselves from all attack from the enemy. And how can we do that is by following what the Apostle Paul said, that we have to um, suit ourselves in the armor of Jesus Christ. So we have to get the helmet. We have to get our sword. 
And we have to get our breastplate. Bless the Lord Jesus. And we have to gird our lines with the truth of God. Bless the Lord Jesus. So the gate controls the entry and exists. So the gate controls the entry and exits. So we have to be very important what we allow to come through our gates. Bless the Lord Jesus. So we have to be with, um, we have to be in conscious. Yes, to know what we are letting in in our heart. So the things that we see on television, the things that we heard, we have to be careful. And we see where the Lord speaks to his servant the other day who teaches us how to guard our gateway. Bless the Lord Jesus. So we have to be mindful of what comes true. Because the Bible said what? Whatever leaveth a man more define that person. And we heard our youth president last week say that if we sow corruption, we shall reap corruption. So if we allow corruption in our heart, whatever comes out of our mouth will be corruption. Bless the Lord Jesus. But if we allow righteousness in our heart, whatever proceeded out of our mouth will be righteousness. And we have to lift up holy hands unto the Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord. So we rebuild our wall through fasting and through communication with the Lord Jesus. When we communicate with the Lord Jesus, we are giving the Holy Spirit of God control of our life. And once the Holy Spirit is leading us, bless the Lord Jesus, then we will be on the right path. And the Holy Spirit will be the gatekeeper of our gate. Bless the Lord Jesus. So we have to allow the Spirit of God to be in control of our life. So that we can be in the right place at all times. We can't afford to allow the things of the world to distract us from the things of God. Bless the Lord Jesus. So when we are in a relationship with God, we will know when we are stepping out of the path that God ordained for us. But if we are not in a constant relationship with God, we only pray when we are in need, then we will not know when we are stepping out on God. A lot of persons step out and get the opportunity to step in. But I say unto God, teach me thy way. Teach me not to leave thy first love. Teach me not to step out of your relationship because I may not be lucky by coming in back. And when I'm praying, I say, Lord, I am a debtor unto you. Because if it wasn't for the price that you pay at Calvary, I would not have been here. Bless the Lord Jesus. So I will always be a debtor unto the Lord Jesus. Because he has given me this opportunity to live to see another day. He has given me this opportunity to this sweet, sweet patient. Something to look forward to. A new Jerusalem. To see my favorite apostle. Bless the Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So, my spiritual wall was preached. So the things I used to do, I do them no more. So I would pick up the Bible to read, and, uh, and I would just put it down and say, um, I'm going to do something, then come back. So my spiritual wall was preached. And as a soldier, once your camp is breached, you are in danger. So if the adversary breaches our wall, we are in jeopardy. So we can't afford 
our wall of fasting, our wall of prayer, our wall of holiness, righteousness to be breached by the adversary. We see where the wall was breached in the garden. And Eve, yes, was tricked by the adversary. And death became a reality. Because the Bible said the rages of sin is death. So if Eve did not sin, there will be no death. Bless the Lord Jesus. Let me not say Eve, if man did not sin, there would not be death. Because the wages of sin is death. But the Lord said, the gift, the gift of God is eternity. Praise the Lord Jesus. So beloved, let's hold on to the gift that God has offered unto us. The gift of everlasting life. The gift that when we reach there, no tears, no moaning, no sorrow. Just joy. Speakable, unspeakable joy, joy, joy. I have joy. So deep, deep down in my soul, I play that song for my daughter every morning before I leave. Joy, joy. So deep in my soul, I have joy. What better joy to have but the joy of Jesus? So we have to allow the Lord to put on his armor upon us. Yes, because we can't rebuild any of these walls on our own. We see where that when they, Eve and Adam sin, they build clothes for themselves. But the Lord undressed them and give them his garment, proper garment. Bless the Lord Jesus. So we have to allow the Lord to dress our heart. We have to allow God to be in control. Bless the Lord Jesus. So we have to allow the Lord to undress us. So we have to present ourselves naked before God and say, Lord, here I am, just me. So that when I step out, person will see me, see you in me and not me. Bless the Lord Jesus. When I am not ashamed of the apostolic doctrine. So when they say which denomination are you? I'm an apostolic. I don't say I'm a Christian. I'm an apostolic. One God. I am a apostolic because they are Christian and they are apostolic. Bless the Lord Jesus. So if you don't preach the apostolic doctrine, then you are not preaching a doctrine. Bless the Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord. And I will be closing shortly. But I was tuning to um, Deacon Thompson when he reminded us of the formula that Jesus created so that man can live for eternity. Bless the Lord Jesus. And if you are there listening to my voice or the voice of God and you don't know the formula, I remind you of the formula. Bless the Lord Jesus. You have to repent of your sin, baptize in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ and fill with the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says that if you are not the Spirit of God, you are none of His. So how oh, can you not believe in the Holy Spirit? If I'm going to inherit eternity, I have to have God inside of me. And God is the Holy Spirit. So I have to have God living inside of me, speaking in tongue as the Spirit of God give me utterance. So God decided to mix up the formula. Bless the Lord Jesus. What a message. The formula. So you have to have that formula. To inherit eternal life. Bless the Lord. But what is happening. Person. 
mixing up the wrong formula. They are, as, as the deacon would say, they have the right ingredient, but they mix it the wrong way. Bless the Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord Jesus. So they, so, so they have the ingredients, but they mix it the wrong way. Bless the Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord. So we have to secure our spaces. We can't allow negativity, hopelessness, frustration, doubt, worries in our space. We have to allow the Holy Spirit, which gives us love, peace, joy, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance. We have to allow the Spirit of God to dwell in us. So if you are online, rather by Zoom or YouTube, and you are not saved, today is the day, as the Lord has said to Nicodemus, today salvation come to your door. So today is the day salvation come to your door. Repent of your sin. Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And he shall fill you with his Holy Ghost. Don't be a stranger of this temple or tabernacle. Come, the door is always open. Come and taste what the Lord Jesus will give unto you. And what he give unto you is life eternity. But what the devil give unto you is life of domination and destruction. And you will spend eternity in a devil hell that was created for him and his angel. But come unto God and receive a crown of joy. A joy that is unspeakable. A gift that will wash away all sorrow. In heaven there is no tears. But worship. And as I close. We see in the book of Revelation. The angels. They bow down. And they worship. The Lord Jesus. And they sing holy, holy, holy unto Lord Almighty. The Lord bless you. May the Lord mercy and grace shine upon you. Let the Lord peace be with you always in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Can we all stand to our feet and lift our hands and worship the Lord everywhere? Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to build together. We're going to build those walls. Hallelujah. We're going to look for the breaches and we're going to build. Jesus. 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 Before we close, we want to sing this beautiful song. I believe this is a song that normally is sung by Sister Miriam Malcolm at church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Barrington, I'm not my own. I belong to Jesus. I'm not my own. I belong to him. He bled and died on Calvary. I'm not my own. I belong.
it one more time. I'm not my own. I belong to Jesus. I'm not my own. everything on the altar this morning or this afternoon Jesus hallelujah Jesus you know one of the things that brother Sterling spoke about and I took note of it is that he spoke about a young man that crossed over to Pentecost and after that the Lord took him so his life was secure in Jesus we have to make our calling on our election sure especially now because now is the time many are giving up many are just saying I can't bother with this Christian pathway anymore but we are still holding on to Jesus let us pray Lord the song said, sometimes the hill and sometimes the mountains. I know the roads with rocks to hurt my feet, but with Jesus to go along before me, I can make it. There'll be no retreat. There'll be no surrender. Lord, many have been in Pentecost for five, for ten, 
15 or 20, 30, even 50 years. And they have walked away from such great salvation. They have gone back out in the fields of sin. But I want to implore somebody today. Don't give up on Jesus. God never give up on us. Think about where you was before Jesus saved you. You should have been dead a long time ago. But according to what the preacher would say today, we are standing on our graves. We are rejoicing in a free and full salvation. Because you have laid it all at the altar. Lord God, I thank you for Brother Sterling, Lord Jesus. Who would have poured out his heart and have spoken what the Lord have laid on his heart pray that you would touch him and his family keep them in perfect peace as they keep their, their high state on you Lord Jesus Lord as we prepare to depart to a separate place of abode Lord we can say it was good to be in your house today and we thank you for your people that gather to worship you whether physical in the sanctuary or online as we go go before lead and direct those who are driving drive for us those who are taking public transportation whatever means of reaching home even so lord cover us and keep us and if you should tarry later on we'll be on zoom to have our evening service at 6 30 lord even so lord speak to us and Lord, we just want to thank you for all that was said and done. Our souls have been richly blessed. Breathe upon us and go with us as we tell you thanks. In Jesus' name, can we all raise our right hand? And we say, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. The Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name.